and we are live on Facebook. That's fantastic. Okay, guys, welcome, welcome Instagram people, Facebook people, and of course, our dear friends on Zoom as well. Good to see you all. Um, and God willing, this will end up on YouTube as well. I'll do that later after the class. Okay, so um, today's discussion um, is called Eight Types of People You Should Socially Distance Yourselves From in 2021. I'll say that again. Eight people that you should socially distance yourself from in 2021. And obviously, socially distance is a borrowed term from what we've all been dealing with over uh, the past year or so. But there's a lot that I have learned, and I'm sure many of you watching have learned as well, from this whole pandemic, corona, this lockdown, quarantining, social distance reality we've all found ourselves in. And as I've said many times before, and I'll say it again, it would be a great mistake to just let the past year leave us as though it never happened. I think it's impacted all of us in different ways, physically, emotionally, psycholo uh, psychologically, of course, as well, and maybe even spiritually. Today, however, I want to talk about, well, I actually started from my conversations with people and readings and understandings, eight types of people you should try to limit your contact with over the next year for your own mental and psychological well-being. Ended up, ended up with a list of like 11 or 12. So you could get a few bonuses if we have time uh, at the end of the discussion. So I'm saying it's eight but it's way more than that. By the way, I could have sat for another couple of hours and pulled out a bunch more as well. Um, we've learned a lot. I think everyone here has learned a lot about themselves, about what they want from life, where they are, where they want to be, how important friends are, how important family is to us as well. And I think that one thing I personally have learned is that how much we need and crave friends and people in our lives. But one thing this thing has taught us is that you don't just need friends in your life, you need the right type of friends. You don't just need people in your lives, you need the right type of people. You don't just need people in your companies, you need the right type of people in your companies. Because some people, as you've, I'm sure, learned, can really lift us up and take us to new heights and help us become better at being ourselves. But some people, unfortunately, have this knack of bringing us down. And I personally have lost my patience for those individuals. We know that we have limited bandwidth by which we can interact with people, that we can build real, true friends. Acquaintances is one thing, the person you pass on the street, hey, how you doing? That's fine. They can stay and they can keep doing whatever they're doing. That's all well and good. I'm talking about the people who are inside our lives, people who we are enmeshed with and we're entangled with. Many of those people, I believe, for our own personal, mental, emotional, spiritual, psychological well-being, we need to disentangle from. We have to unmesh from as well. And that's what we're going to look at today. Those people who we have in our lives through our decisions, through maybe school, vacation, neighborhood, that we should distance from. I didn't say cut off. Maybe some of these people you should cut off from. No doubt about it. But one thing that this past year has taught us is there are people in our lives who just suck the joy, the ambition, the inspiration from our lives. Just like if you read the Harry Potter books or you saw the movies, I didn't see the movies, but I read the books. They're like the Dementors. They just come into our sphere of influence and they suck everything out of us. Those are the people who you are not going to be able to change. I've said this many, many times before. Try as you might, but you can change yourself. And sometimes you just have to make a good, healthy boundary between you and them. And so boundaries is going to be pretty much what we're talking about. I had someone who called me, I got a lot of phone calls this week and a lot of emails, but someone I know is dealing at work will see with a lot of drama. 
with one of these people, someone who's welcomed for a long time. And together we made a decision that Dayenu, it's enough. It's affecting everyone and there had to be a boundary that was put down. I'm going to talk about that in a second. That's going to be one of the eight or 12, as the case may be, we're going to look at. Okay, let's start with number one. Number one of the eight types of people you should associate from 2021. People who subtly belittle your ambitions. They're not overt about it. They're very subtle. We all have ambitions. We have desires, wants, needs, things we want to achieve in life. There's always those people who kind of come in and for whatever reason, and sometimes you can figure out the reasons. Maybe it's jealousy. Maybe it's impatience. Maybe they want to have more of your time, which they know they're going to get less of. But they're subtle about it. And they'll make certain comments and jabs, belittling. Oh, you want to do that? Yeah, not going to happen. You're not going to. Don't waste your time. You don't need that in your life. We realize this year more than any past year of the preciousness of every single moment. Right, that as you get older, I'm sure you've experienced it, life just moves so quickly and year after year. And we have things we want to accomplish. Maybe those things are financial, maybe they're spiritual, maybe they're psychological. Companies, businesses, families, we have things, we have ambitions. It's very, very important that you surround yourself with people who want the best from you. And really, that's what this whole talk is. We could leave the talk right there surrounding yourself with people who want the best for you. And sometimes people creep into your life and they'll make a comment and they'll say something. And sometimes you can't get these people out of your life. You work with them. Maybe they're family. Maybe they're a, a mother or a mother-in-law. I get a lot of emails from people who struggle with that as well. Many people are lucky, like most of us, to have families and loved ones who want the best from us. But sometimes those people who make comments who aren't happy for your success. You don't need that in your life. There's enough challenge in the world today, my friends. There's enough going on. There's enough struggle that you want to keep those people out. So people who subtly belittle your ambitions, stay away from. Now, obviously, every one of these eight or 12 things we're going to talk about, eight types of people, there's a reverse. So I'm going to ask you in your own minds to implicitly, I'm injecting each one of these eight people, people who do the opposite and lift us up, right? You want to find people who can lift you up, who can make you feel good, who when you say you have an idea, they don't just poo-poo it. They're like, I think you can do it, right? Now, a real friend we've spoken about is not someone who just says, yeah, do whatever you want to do. They're like, that's a good idea, right? And they may help you to create new ambitions and they're going to push you forward. You have to really think about it because there's many people who many of you have in your lives, who kind of just hung in there for months and years and maybe decades, who you just kind of accept in your life. But unfortunately, they're not bringing out the breast in you. They're not bringing out the best in you. And you need to push them aside. You need to socially distance from them in order to fulfill your potential. Number two of the eight types of people you should socially distance from in 2021 are people who engage themselves in petty drama. Now, I used to have a high tolerance rate for this, and I used to try to get involved in this drama. And I say petty drama because sometimes there's big drama, and sometimes you need to get involved in those situations, those scenarios. I'm dealing with couples who are going through major challenges and problems. I get calls and emails all the time on these things. And I try as best as I can to help. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about people who create, create petty drama and they throw it on you. And once again, they want to draw you in. They want to pull you in to their universe. They're like gravity just sucking you in like a vortex, like a black hole. And that's exactly what it feels like sometimes, their petty drama. As I began the talk by saying, I have a good friend of mine who's working in a company and there are some people working there who invest so much of their time in petty dramas. So he called me in to kind of give him a reality check and we had a long conversation about it. And we realized that so much of his time as the CEO of a company, of a successful property company, was left dealing with the people behind the scenes and those in front of the scenes who got involved in petty and unnecessary drama. Why? Why do they do this? Well, truth be told, I don't know. I think in this case, they were jealous, they wanted more 
front positions, right? There are people who are moving up the company faster than them. So there's a few things they can do. They can shout, scream, get angry, but people don't tolerate that. So they create petty drama and they speak behind other people's backs and they try to find information and dirt on them and they try to find faults on them. You don't need that. And we actually analyzed how many hours of the week this CEO of this multi-million dollar company was spending in this world of petty drama. And he was getting it, he was sitting there having conversations with them, having midnight meetings with these people trying to quell all this drama. Drama is good for Netflix and it's good for a movie, but it's really not good for your life because it sucks the emotional energy out of you and all of us are limited. There's only so much power that we can give out, only so much energy. And if we put it somewhere, we're neglecting putting it somewhere else. So those people in your lives, friends, family, or workplace, now, it's a big statement. I said to him that this drama is never gonna go away. And he felt a year ago when it started, because it takes a long time, they'll grow out of it, it's gonna be fine. I'll pay them more, give them more vacations, and the answer doesn't work that way. Truth be told, in most cases, the drama has to be cut out. It has to be cut out of your life, okay? It just takes too much work and energy to deal with it. And he was making a major financial loss because he's meant to be bringing in business. And instead, he's dealing with his inner business of this petty drama, okay? Don't get involved in it. It's not worth it. And remember, you cannot change or please the people or bring in. There's nothing you can do. And believe me, I've tried everything. And nothing you can say to remove that level of petty drama that's in your life. Okay, that's number two. Number three of the people you should socially distance from in 2021. And when I say that, I mean put down some good, strong boundaries. Are people who act like a victim in the problems they've created. People who act like a victim. I'm laughing because the people are coming to my head right now. People who act like a victim in the problems they've created. And they come to you and, oi, poor me, poor me, I'm dealing with this and I'm dealing with that. And we naturally, because most people, I believe, are good. Most people are good people. Most people are caring. And they want good for other people as well. And these people, I don't know where it comes from. Maybe it's their childhood. Maybe they, they want to be attached to their mummies still, you know. They never really outgrew that phase of their life. And they want to go back. But that mother is not really there. Maybe they're alive, but they're not there anymore. They have to kind of take responsibility for their own lives. So what they do is they love to act as victims. And once again, these people are a drain on your emotional energy. And many times they're a drain on your time. And they're a drain on your friends. And they're a drain on your money, right? Because time, especially when it comes to work, but also your mental presence. And what's annoying is they've created, right, these problems just so that they can be victims. And in many cases, you feel sorry for them. They could be going through a terrible marriage. They could be going through a terrible divorce. They could be going through a terrible business or dealing with children. But in many cases, these are problems that didn't just come to them. They created it, but they love to be the victim. Stay away from people. Trust me, I'm a rabbi. Stay away from people who like to be victims of their own problems. They're gonna pull things out of you that you just don't have to give, okay? That's number three. Number four is, I'm sure, something that everyone watching today can relate to in a big, big way. Okay, and these are the people who only talk to you when they want something from you, okay? There are people who are only gonna to talk to you and engage you in conversation and friendship, in inverted commas, when they want something from you. You don't need those people in your life. They're usually very selfish people. And me personally, after the past year, my time is precious, my emotions, I'm very, very selective, as we all should be. When you're younger, schmooze with everyone, but you get to a point in your life where you just wanna do what you need to do and focus on the people that you can find the best with. And those people, who are, and I'm going to use this word because this is, I think, a buzzword, inauthentic. We live in a generation which has a strong need and desire for authenticity. And authenticity really comes from friends. We need friends who are authentic. And those people who just attach themselves to you when they need something, 
that's not okay. Now, we all need things from other people. And we all need time, effort, sometimes money, favors. That's okay. But turning up out of the blue and just saying, oh, I need this. And could you do something for me? When they've never been in contact with you and only use you for their own purposes, even if those purposes aren't nefarious, right? They just are. That's not healthy and it's not good. You need to limit your time to those friends who are there for you when you need them and they need you. People who stayed in contact with you, people who've built a relationship. But those people who only talk to you and they need something, they're going to take away from you. And once again, your resources are finite, not infinite. Your emotional resources are finite. You've all picked up on that in the past year. Your financial resources are also finite. Your friendship, the amount you can give people, it's finite. You've got to be selective and don't feel bad or guilty about cutting people out of your life. There's many other suckers those people can find in order to fulfill their own personal selfish ambitions. If you want one word that I think is so necessary in 2021, it's being authentic and true to yourself. I spoke about this in great detail when we spoke about narcissism. The way to find a narcissist is to stay true to yourself. Be confident in yourself and your own decisions. You have limited bandwidth. Know who you have time for. Okay, so that's number four. Number five of people who she's so distant from in 2021. Actually, this applies to all years, not just 2021. Are people who criticize you all the time. Now, I've spoken about criticism in terms of, in the uh, parameters of friendship. And criticism is good and healthy. We all need people in our lives who are going to tell us the truth. And sometimes we need to be criticized. Don't talk that way. Don't act that way. Sometimes don't eat that way. We all need that in our lives. Personally, I don't take criticism very, very well. But from the people I love and trust, it's a life force to me. I think one of the problems we have with reality stars and all these stars and, is that people don't criticize them. Right? Everyone's loved to them and they suck up to them and they don't really have any good, healthy criticism. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the narcissist who is constantly criticizing you, bringing you down to make themselves superior and you inferior. That exists. And if you want to know more about that, go visit my class on how to deal and how to spot a narcissist. Now, I'm talking about friends of yours who are constantly just putting you down, always criticizing you, never looking at the good in you. And when you leave their presence, you just don't feel good. You know what? At this point in your life, unless you need to deal with someone because you're stuck with them because they're families or employees or employers and dealing with them as well, making a strong boundary there is also very necessary. But those people who con constantly criticize you and when you're in their presence, they don't make you feel good. Pfft, push it away. Push it away. And many of us have these people in our lives who are stuck to us like a barnacle on the bottom of a boat. And we never realize they're there. And it's actually worth taking stock. Is this person adding to my life force or taking away from it? Is this person adding to my emotional well-being or not? And if they're not, make a gap. And they'll come to you and they'll be the victim. You never call me. You're never in touch. It could be that you could talk straight to them and say, you know what? I need to have a gap between us, right? I'm still digesting the past year and I need to figure out where I am and where I'm going. But this relationship isn't working for me right now. I need some space. It's really a sign of emotional health and well-being when you're able to create good, healthy boundaries. I think God put us in this situation a little bit so that we can monitor who we're letting in and who we are letting out. Okay, the next, this is number one, two, three, four, five, six of eight, but we have time, so we're gonna do a few more. Are people who lie to themselves. And such people are really a drain on our well-being. They're constantly making up stories and lying to themselves about what's going on, about their reality, and they create fake worlds. And maybe these worlds are live, or maybe these worlds are uh, online, okay? This is not what we need uh, from these people. These people were lying to themselves, 
about who they are, about what they can be, about what they want to be. And we kind of buy into that false world vision. It's not healthy for us. And I know we're on social media and we are to some degree naturally being on social media, buying into this false life. But we have to realize that that's not real. And those people who always lie to themselves about what they want, where they are, their social status, stay away from it. It does no good. People who lie to themselves are going to end up lying to you. I call lying like a snowball effect. You get involved and it really envelopes, uh, envelops all the other things we've mentioned. It kind of ends up being drama as part of their life and they become the victim. Then they're belittling you because their false lying world they create for themselves ends up being hampered by your real, authentic, true life. Be true to yourself and feel good about who you are. Because all of us, all of us watching today have things that we can do that no one else can do. And those things are great. And there's things that we just can't do and other people do better. There's always someone to be better looking than you. Get over it. They're smarter. There's more ambitious. But people who create these false worlds, if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. These worlds of lies they live in, eventually the truth always rises to the top like oil, okay? And related to that is our next one, and that is people who harm your mental health. Now, I think the people we looked at before, and the seven, one, two, three, four, five, six people we already discussed are going to be impacting your mental health. You want to surround yourself and be involved with people who are there to increase your mental health and make you feel better about who you are, okay? And that's not always hard to tell because there's people who kind of encroach in your life who impact you in ways that you are not even aware of. I've spoken a lot about narcissists over the past few weeks and I think more than any other topic I've ever spoken about, the amount of calls emails and messages I've received from people about that topic has made me think that the pandemic isn't COVID-19, my friends. The pandemic we're seeing today is a pandemic of narcissism. I mean, I knew it existed because I do a lot of counseling and I meet such people, but I think it's a lot more widespread. Is this nature? Is it nurture? Was it created? Does society give it to them? Where do they get it from? Okay, there's a questions for people greater than myself. But I'm telling you, I'm seeing it, okay? People who detract from your mental health, you need to distance from, okay? Now, I know some of you are thinking, but I can't. I'm talking about a mother-in-law, which you get calls about. It could be a mother. I get calls about that as well. There's some people who you need to have in your life. Rarely will I tell someone to ever cut off contact with a mother or a mother-in-law. There are such... Rare, rare, rare cases if this person is really destroying you. But what you need to do is make a healthy and safe boundary between them. I know people who have this from their own kids, but I've got to be involved with my kids. I understand, but you are able to limit. And there's a lot of guilt that we have, especially us, the Jewish people, right, that is invested in all our relationships. And we feel as though we should be in touch with them. And we feel as though we should be on WhatsApp with them. And we feel as though we should be in, in contact and call with them. And some people we should, okay? But we're able to create channels which are safe for us, especially during this time, that allows only those people who make our mental health better come close to that. Which takes us to the next group, which is people with no boundaries, okay? Now, once again, we all have such people in our lives. And those are the people who may not always um, criticize us, but they enmesh themselves in our lives constantly and are always hanging on in a very unhealthy and constant way. They're constantly calling us and they're constantly involving themselves in our lives. And anyone who wants a successful year is going to have to create boundaries with those people who love to enmesh themselves. I'm not very well known, but there's certain people who are constantly 
calling and constantly WhatsApping. And then even now, I try to be available to people, but I can't be. And you cannot be available to all people all the time. And there's some people who do it in a healthy fashion, right? And they'll WhatsApp you, can have a conversation. I have a conversation right after this talk with someone in Israel who's dealing with something. So we always have this stuff. But there's some people who just don't have boundaries and will enmesh themselves in your life. And you feel as though you're saving their lives. You're not. By allowing them to do that, to overstep their boundaries into your life, you are actually doing more harm than good. And I'll, can one person be part of all of the above? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Question from our Facebook friends. One person can be part of all of the above. They can be involved in petty drama. They are the victim of the problems they've created. They only talk to you when they want something from you. They criticize you. Yeah. Now, such a person, you need to get them out, right? Because they're going to bring you down in a very, very big way. Perpetual complainers. People who you just sit with and they're always complaining about everything. And when I say everything, I mean everything. They'll complain about food, right? And you know that joke about two, two people in a restaurant and someone says, you know, how's the food? He says, oh, the food is terrible. And the portions, they're so small. No matter what they do, they're always finding a way to complain about everything. Don't think that when you listen to those people, those people aren't impacting you and making you a complainer as well. Okay? It says in, in Pirkei Avot, the Mishnah, Oy le rasha, oy le shcheno, which means it's bad for a bad person. But it's also really bad for the people who live near them. Living near them doesn't just mean geographically, but also I'm going to say emotionally as well. If you're near those people all the time, they're going to end up impacting you and you will learn from them. We learn good things from good people and we learn bad things from bad people. And we've all had that situation. You get off the phone with someone who complains, complains, complains about everything in their life because they're always a victim and there's a lot of drama going on. And most of the time it's them. They've lied to themselves about who they are and what they should be. And this complaining ends up infecting who you are as well. And you find yourself complaining as well. Right? This is a problem. This is a problem and this needs to be. I have two more and these are bonuses. I know we've exceeded our eight, but we have just two more minutes. I want to talk about these people as well. I want to talk about angry people, okay? Um, people have suffered a lot being on lockdown and quarantining, whether they're by themselves, but there's also people who suffered by being at home with their friends and family, okay? And they've got to see sides of people that they don't like and are not healthy for them. Angry people are a problem, okay? Now, we always kind of make excuses for them. Well, they have a right to get angry, they have emotions, and the answer is they don't, actually. There's many other ways that we can relieve all of our frustrations and irritations and agonies, anger towards you is not one of them, whether it's a spouse, definitely whether it's a child, although it's understandable, or whether it's a employer or employee, people have suffered greatly. And with good reason, they have to be angry. But in most of these cases, the anger is not doing anything but destroying you by being there in the force of the anger as it leaves them. People, and we all lose our temper sometimes. We all lose that. I freak out, I shout, scream. We all go through it, you know? I'm talking about people who are perpetually angry. They're just angry about life and they're negative and they point the anger towards you, okay? And you may be thinking, you know, if I listen to them, they'll feel better. And the answer is no, it doesn't work that way. If it did, I would say, listen to their anger because that's how to get a conversation, good. Communication, fantastic, but anger, People who are angry, distance from them in 2021. And actually, I'll do that into the future as well. And the final group I want to talk about, although, by the way, I could have spoken for another half hour, right, and written a whole new list. This is just a list of some I just jotted down over the past few days, is selfish people. And really, all these people we're talking about are selfish. They're always thinking about themselves and not the other, okay? People who are selfish are going to belittle their ambitions. People who are selfish are going to get involved in petty drama because it's all about them. It's me, me, me. People who are selfish make themselves into the victim so that, you know what, all your time and energy could be focused towards me. And they're only going to talk to you when they want stuff because they're, they're selfish, right? And they're going to criticize you all the time as well because, you know what, your emotions don't matter because I'm the only one that does matter. Right? And they have no boundaries because they're selfish. By definition, means I need to come into your life and to extract 
everything that I need. And you'll see that selfish people are going to complain as well. And if you don't listen to who they are, they get very, very angry as well. So selfish people are a big drain and give a, take a, a, a strong emotional, psychological, and maybe even financial toll upon ourselves. Distance yourself from these people. We've learned this past year, there is something called socially distance. And it was difficult, but I think there's something we can learn from it, something positive, because every negative always has some positive, And that is, I don't need thousands of people in my life. I don't need all these people to make me feel who I am. I can be true to myself. I have, I'm a good person. And I believe that most people are inherently good. They may do bad and stupid things, but inherently we are good people. And if other people have come to us and they've acted in these ways, we've learned that you can keep a distance, an emotional, a physical, a psychological distance from these people. And the further away and the select few, and it should be a select few, I call it like a, I see it like a dart board or an archery board. There's some people who make the bullseye, but notice how small the bullseye is. It's only a few bullseye friends that you can have in your life, right? And then you have the kind of friends, then the acquaintances, and then the people, as I said before, you see in the street, you're like, hey, that's okay. Not everyone needs to enmesh themselves inside your life. Keep a distance, learn who the people are who can lift you up, okay? Your time on this earth is limited. Your time in every single day is limited as well. And finding time for yourself, for your own personal self-improvement. If you're watching this video, I'm assuming you're a person who either loves me, but more importantly, hopefully, you're someone who loves yourself. And realize that sometimes I need to give to myself. I need to grow as an individual. And if I'm constantly giving to other people, I can't give to anybody else. And I definitely can't give to myself. So those are the eight types of people that turn into, I think, 12 or 13, people to socially distance from in 2021. Number one, people who subtly belittle your ambitions. Stick with the people who want you to do well yourself. People who engage themselves in petty drama. You don't need that drama. Just stay away from it. And I promise you, you cannot change those people. Don't even try. People who act like the victim. In problems, they've created... Some people really are victims, Right? Uh, money could have victimized them. They could be unwell. Things just happen to them. I'm not talking about people. Are, I'm talking about the people who created their own problems and then act like a victim because of them. Those are the people you don't need in your lives. People who only talk to you when they want something from you. Enough of that. If you want to be my friend, you're going to be with me with I need stuff and when you need stuff and we have a relationship and have a friendship. People who criticize you all the time, not only sometimes, People who lie to themselves and create these false castles of perfectness, not healthy to be around, not live and not online. People who harm your mental health, which is pretty much all of them. People with no boundaries who enmesh themselves in your life, physically, emotionally, perpetual complainers, not good. Angry people, selfish people. My friends, hear me well. Separate yourselves from all these people, distance yourselves from them, and God willing, you will have a much, much better 2021. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca, for your comment. Thank you, Instagram and Facebook and Zoom and YouTube. And Godwin will pick this up next week with more adventures into getting better at being you. Thank you, guys.